Hi everyone, my name is Parth. I'm a software engineer and a few years ago I became really frustrated with IDEs. So I tried a terminal based workflow that gave me a lot more control over the way I write code. Since then I've gone through university studying CS, worked for a few software companies, and worked on a pretty diverse set of projects. Throughout all that, the setup has scaled really well. So I wanted to take a moment to share it with anyone else interested in investing in a similar setup. So first let's talk about how I structured my configuration. All the configuration files live in this .files folder. As you can see, there's a folder for tmux, vim, zsh. This is where their configurations live respectively. It's important to note that this is a GitHub repository, so I can use git to keep this folder up to date, which means that across all the other machines that I use, this folder stays up to date too. So if I make a change locally to my vimrc and I ssh into a work server, then all my changes are propagated across all those machines as soon as I log in. The way I've set it up is also fairly modular, so if we look at um, the vimrc for example, it's just sourcing the actual vimrc that's in my configuration. Same respectively with my zshrc, tmux config, and any files in the future, they'll just source configuration files that are in my .files folder. This gives me the flexibility to have system-specific changes live on certain machines. So there's some changes that I shouldn't be committing to GitHub on work machines and things like that. Those just say in the actual zshrc and don't get put in my .files folder. In my setup, I've added a queue of key bindings, and whenever I'm looking to bind a key or add new functionality, I look through my history files, so your bash history file or your zsh history file, to look at what you do repeatedly. So for example, every time I cd into a new folder, I always ls, like as a rule of thumb. So I remap cd to cd and ls. So if I go into dot .files, it immediately prints out the contents of dot .files. I also go back to home a lot, so I've added control h to cd me back to home. Another really useful key binding is control g. So let's say I'm in a git repository and I add a new file, like a test file. I would usually have to stage all the files for commit, create a commit with a message, and then do a git push. I've added all of that functionality to control G. So if I control G, it'll git add dash A. It'll put me in a vim buffer with a summary of all the files I changed, where I can write a message like added test file, save it, and those changes are pushed instantly. Similarly, I can do this inline. So if I added a bunch of information like removed unneeded file, control G, it'll push those changes for me. FC is a fairly useful command. It takes the last thing in your history and it puts it in a vim buffer for you to modify. So I've mapped this functionality to control V. If I control V, it'll take the last command I did and it'll add it to a vim buffer. So if I take the contents of this buffer and replace it with ping google.com, it'll do that instead, but it's obviously more useful for making slight changes to a long command. Another way to make slight changes to a long command, let's say you're copying a file from somewhere to here, and you mess it up, you can bring it back and press escape to enter VI mode. So VI mode is a plugin for ZSH that allows me to use vim movement keys to move around this buffer, make the change I wanted to make, and then run it. Now you can see that file is here. Another ZSH plugin I find really useful is auto suggestions. So if I'm typing in a long command that I used last week and I know it starts with Java C, then it'll search my history for every letter I put in to try to find the most recent match. So here is the command I'm looking for. I also use a syntax highlighting plugin that gives me a visual indication of when I mistype a command before I execute it so I can enter VI mode and fix it real quick. Another really useful key binding I use all the time is control K, which is mapped to cd dot dot. So let's say I'm in a really deep nested folder. I can control K to go up. So in Java, where every package name is a folder, so com.parth.projectName is going to be three different folders, this is really useful to just quickly hit K three times and reach what I was trying to reach. Now let's talk about my prompt. My prompt basically takes on the format of an array of plugins that each display themselves when it's contextually relevant, based on where I am or what I'm doing. 
So by default, the present working directory plugin is always there. There's no condition for this to appear or disappear. Anytime I go in a different folder, it tells me where I am. Next is the exit status plugin. So anytime a program returns with an exit code of non-zero, you know something went wrong. So if I do ls and then I echo dollar sign question mark, that'll tell me that I returned with an exit code of zero. Now, if I try to SSH into a machine, like this, and something goes wrong, obviously here I'm interrupting it, my plugin will tell me not only that something did go wrong, but what the actual status code was that it returned. This is really useful where many programs have different exit codes for when you lose network connectivity, when your authentication information is incorrect, things like that. And this can save you a lot of frustration. Another really useful plugin is the Git plugin. Whenever I'm in a Git repository, not only does it tell me you're in a Git repository, it tells me what branch I'm on, and it also tells me how many files have been modified recently. So if I only have one change file, then it's master plus one. If I have two change files, it'd be master plus two. This is really useful for getting a sense of how far away you are from master when it's time to push. This is also really useful for catching mistakes like Someone forgot to add node modules to your git ignore, and you npm install, and now there's like 300 new files in your working directory that you didn't mean to commit. This can avoid that hassle. When you sudo a command, you often say in sudo for a few minutes afterwards. So I sudo ping google.com here, and I interrupt it. You can see I can still sudo something without having to type in my password. It's useful to know when this is possible, when this is not. When you SSH into a server, if you SSH in as root, it gives you a warning that right now you're in root and you can do anything you want. Another really useful context plugin is the PID plugin. So if I background a task, for example, let's say I background google.com, it'll tell me what PID this task was backgrounded with. So I can kill it based on that PID. Of course, I can also kill background tasks with using ZSH's search. Another really simple plugin is the timing plugin. So if I run a program that takes more than a second to run, the time plugin will tell me how long in seconds it took to run. Pretty simple. And that pretty much wraps up the ZSH part of this. In Tmux, I've added a few things, not too much. I've remapped Control-B to tilde. So this might seem alarming if you write a lot of markdown documentation or something like that. To get the actual backtick, you just have to press backtick twice. I've also remapped create a new pane to, con to V. So I can do tilde V to create a new vertical split, and tilde quotation to create a horizontal split. I've also remapped the Vim movement keys to Tmux movements, so the normal Vim movement gestures go to up, down, left, right, correspond to Vim's up, down, left, right as well. That's also really useful for when you want to navigate your buffer in VI mode. So for example, I can do tilde escape, and now I'm in VI mode, and I can traverse this using my Vim movement keys. I can search for things, like I can search for the word net, It'll take me through all the ver all the occurrences of the word net, and perhaps most usefully, I can use visual selection and copying just like I can in Vim. So I can copy this, and this will copy Tmux buffer to my system clipboard. So if I wanted to now message this to a friend in Messenger or Slack, I can just paste the output of this program directly in. This of course works in Vim as well, so I can paste output from different Vim instances into other Vim instances. And I have mouse mode enabled both in Vim and in Tima. If I am looking at some source file like this, I can click the center pane, resize it freely. I can also highlight things here, and they won't affect what text is here, like it would normally in Terminal. That pretty much ends the ZSH and Tmux part of this talk. If you look at my VimRC, it's pretty minimalistic. 
I have standard setup stuff like remap leader key to comma, syntax on, auto indent, and code folding by tab like you saw at the beginning. But there's also some useful stuff that, like, if I'm searching for a term, Java, and it highlights it, I can use Control L to clear it. For all the normal movement keys, I've added their more extreme version. For example, K you can use to go up, Shift K you can use to go all the way up to the top of the file, or Shift J to go all the way to the bottom. I've added some rough templating things. Um, I don't really depend on templating that much or code completion that much, but a few things get repetitive. So if I'm working in a, if I'm working in Java, for example, and I want to print out an expression like this, I can in insert mode, comma sys, and it'll output it. Or if I'm debugging something and I'm setting in a is equal to this complex function over here or something like that, and I want to see what the value of this is, I can highlight it and then do, oops, I can highlight it and print it out, print out just what's in the visual selection. For loops are very similar in almost every language, so I can do 5 comma 4, which will create a for loop with an upper bound of 5. I can do comma w to save comma q to quit, comma x to save and quit. Um, I don't want to save this file, so I won't show that, but I can use comma t to open a new tab and show the file explorer that I'm in for the directory I'm in right now. So I was in my home folder when I started Vim, it's showing that right now. I can do the same thing with comma v, which opens a vertical split and shows me this folder, or comma s, which opens a horizontal split. And finally, just a convenience feature, if I'm browsing a file like this one and I want it to go to line 50, and I make a small change here, I quit, I realize that change isn't what I want to do anymore, I can open it again and it'll take me to the line where I was last at. This is really useful. And there you have it, that's my configuration. I hope that helps someone. If you're interested in creating a configuration like this one, I really recommend that you start with just the bare bones bash, vim, and tmook configuration, and as things feel cumbersome, you add them then. If you're interested in trying out my configuration, you can check out my GitHub, where you can just clone this repository and run deploy. It'll back up all your old configuration files and create new ones that just have the source command that we talked about earlier. All the plugins I used are added as Git modules, so for example, if you're interested in the auto suggestions plugin, if you click on this link, it'll take you to the actual repository where I took it from. And finally, for any snippets that I used that were from blogs or Stack Overflow questions or just random tidbits here and there, I tried to give credit to whoever was the author of them, whether it was a Stack Overflow question or a blog post. You can feel free to browse those. There are some excellent resources there. If you do want to try this out, I would recommend that you fork this because I'm changing stuff all the time. I wouldn't want to deploy a change that would break your configuration files in when you need them most or something like that. So feel free to fork when it's stable and everything works well for you and change things. I'd love to see what you guys end up changing. If you enjoyed that, let me know below. I'm looking to create more instructional content in the future, so let me know if you want me to dive deeper into any of the features I talked about or how I created them. Thank you.